OK, so once you install Toolbox 4.5, the installation brings you the Toolbox desktop client, the server, and now you also get the web suite. Launching the web suite brings up this window from which you can access the Toolbox web client and the web API. Clicking on the web client's link loads the web browser connected to your own Toolbox server. Now, here on the left, all the commands are grouped in these menus. And if you're wondering where to start, we've made it obvious by placing this big button here. Now let's add a chemical to start working. You can add a chemical by a cast number, by easy number, by chemical name, or by structure. Let's enter a chemical by chemical name. I'll enter dichlorophenol. We get three hits. Let's select them all, confirm, and then we have in the matrix those three chemicals. If you expand the structure info, you can browse basic identification information for all of these chemicals. Now, if you look at the other section, they are all completely empty because we haven't done any work with these chemicals yet. What we can do is to calculate some parameters. Wherever you see this flash icon, this means that clicking on this uh, uh, command will be will trigger it immediately and there will be no questions asked. Let's click on it. This automatically calculates all of the parameters for those three structures, and you can now browse them unfolding the 2D and 3D sections. You see we have the values for each of the chemical. Clicking on some of the parameter names brings more information about the calculator that has performed the calculation of the toolbox object. So for example, this one here, this is calculated by a module that has been authored by the USCPA. Now, I'll remove some of the chemicals to make room for more information, and let's move on to the next sections. On the profiling, you can again either on all of the profilers, or you can select specific profilers. Clicking on this button brings up a window in which all profilers in the toolbox installation are listed. You can filter them by type, or you can type a name to filter the needed profiler. Let's select all endpoint specific profilers, select them all, confirm, and now the system has calculated those profilers and we can browse the results. Clicking on a result brings literature for this profiler, which is the same that uh, users may be used to in the web client. Clicking on a profiler name, again, as in the case with the calculators, we bring some information about the toolbox objects that has performed this task. Now that we have seen how we can retrieve parameters and profiles, let's move on and collect some data. Collecting data can be accessed in the same two ways. We can now either retrieve all the data available in the Toolbox server, or we can collect specific data. To collect specific data, we can select the endpoint from the endpoint tree, but let's go and collect all data available for this chemical. During the collection of data, you'll see this progress bar on the top, and when it's done, you'll see that next to each of the sections of the endpoint tree, you have a label which displays information for how many chemical and how many data points we have on this row. For example, let's open physical chemical properties. We see we have data for boiling point, for melting freezing point, and so on. Clicking on a data brings some meta information about the data points. Again, you can also simply type in the filter and you'll see the point of interest. Next, let's go and look for some analogs of this chemical. You can do this by either a functional group, which uses the organic functional groups and selected databases, or you can specify the exact profiler and database that you want to use. Let's do that. First of all, we'll look for skin inclusion rules. 
Skin Irritation Corrosion Inclusion Rules by BFR. We can select this profile, confirm, and then you need to select the database in which we are going to look for chemicals. In my example, this will be the skin sensitization e-stock. Let's confirm. And the system informs us that it has found four analogs, and it will load those four analogs. From this point on, you can continue working with those chemicals, retrieve data for them, uh, run workflows or QSRs on all of them. To continue with my demonstration, I will start with a empty matrix and I want to show you how you can add a chemical using the 2D editor. So again, you go to the input section and this time use the structure. From here, you can either type the smiles code directly or you can launch the editor and then use the tools here to, to draw a chemical or again by simply pasting a smiles, the system will draw it for you. Click OK, then search as in the previous example, and this brings one chemical as an example. We also add one more, which will be the same dichlorophenol. Dichlorophenol, but this time I'm going to select one of those chemicals, this one. Now I want to show you one of the two ways that you can fill in data gaps. The first one is by running workflows. Running workflows is accessed by, by this command here, which shows all, all the available workflows on the toolbox server. These are the workflows that come pre-installed with the toolbox, and you have, if you have already created new ones, then they will show up in this dialog as well. Let's launch the census, the workflow for defined approaches. Right now, the execution is done on the server, and if you're, you're using a remote server, which is powerful enough, then you may safely do this from a, from a mobile device or from a less powered notebook. As you see, the system is now, is now simply waiting for the result, which is now displayed here on the human health hazards. We have sensitization. The result for the first chemical is negative, out of domain, and we can see why it is out of domain for this uh, workflow. And for the next chemical, the result is positive. The last, the last thing that I want to show you is how you can run QSRs. Let's go to the next section, open the QSR editor, and here you'll see that QSRs are grouped under the endpoint tree. So let's go on the human health hazards, again, sensitization, we see a number of QSRs available here. Double clicking on any of those, we'll put it in, in the list and we can apply it. Clicking on apply, will bring up this window because as part of the DNS QSR database, you need to read those li this license and confirm it. Once you run it, you get the result which is positive in domain. 